Welcome to the hit show, Beyond Proof Radio with Angie, redefining death and loss on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Are you struggling with loss? Are you willing to challenge everything you've been taught about life and death? Beyond Proof Radio is a space that explores beyond current self-limiting beliefs surrounding loss, offering radical healing, which will come from the least likely of places. Join Angie on her journey, which includes science, medicine, and spirituality, proving that the body is merely a shell of our soul. It's possible to create an amazing life from the depths of pain. It's your life. It's your choice. Now, here's your host. Hi, my beautiful listeners. Welcome to another episode uh, of Beyond Proof. I am your host, Angie Corbett Kuiper, and today I thought we would talk about what death can teach us about life. And I had such a great response. Uh, This was a lecture that I had put on, three lectures actually, um, what death can teach us about life. And I thought I would share that with you, with you all. And what I did was I shared an image and it was an image in the clouds. And I asked my audience, what do you see in these clouds? And you all, you should have heard all of the different things that people saw a woman dancing a woman wearing a ballet like a tutu, an angel, a heart. One woman said a Tyrannosaurus Rex, and sure enough, when she pointed it out, you certainly could see it. The point that I was bringing into this was that we cannot judge each other's journey because we all are viewing other people's lives, our own lives, based on our own beliefs, based on our own perceptions, based on our own experiences. And the same holds true in death. And what I have found in death is that we are told sometimes you didn't cry. You don't cry long enough. We think it's time that you get out of the house. We think it's time that you start dating again. We think that you need to start smiling more. Get involved. And I'm here to share. We have to know ourselves so well, or we can get trapped in other people's stories and their beliefs. So it's so important that we find our own path and our own journey, and we feel comfortable enough in our own skin that we're able to live our life and not have guilt or shame. And let's face it, death sucks. It is painful and it is a journey. It is something that we will never get over. We can go through it, but we will never get over that. There is, for me at least, there is always something, a reminder, a trigger, not that it's always sad. Not that I'm in tears, balled up in the fetal position as if I was like that when I was, when I first had had learned about the suicide deaths of of my son and husband. Uh, It is a little bit more far and few between, but death just sucks. A little bit about me. I was born and raised in Ames, Iowa in 1965. I grew up in Catholic grade school, in Catholic middle school, high school, went to church every Sunday. Um, I got my degree from New Mexico State University in marketing and advertising. I worked for the Xerox Corporation. I married who would be my husband for 20 years. We had beautiful children, Nicholas and Zach. They were seven years apart. I did everything, you guys, that I thought that we were supposed to, quote, unquote, as I put the little quotation marks on my fingers, uh, holding it up where you guys can't see. I asked my my now ex-husband for a divorce, and it was nothing inherently wrong. We, I just wanted something different. Uh, I was going down a more spiritual path. I felt very alone 
uh, not being able to talk to anyone about what I was learning and what I was doing and the guilt and shame that came with that was exhausting. And I would do anything to not have upturned my family. But all of these decisions, you guys, all of these painful decisions have led me to this exact moment in time. And I truly believe my ex-husband, Stefan, and I get along very well. Zach, uh, Stefan, myself, we get along extremely well. And both of us have said we would have been better, you know, we were, were better off friends. And so there is that stigma of thou, you know, you will be married till death do you part. Um, but for me, this was a choice and it wasn't ugly and it wasn't mean and it wasn't mean spirited. It was just something that I felt I needed in order to move on. On August the 11th, 1994, Nick was born. He died March 31st, 2015. He chose to take his life on top of a small hill in the Sandia foothills. And as a mom, it was painful because knowing that my son was all by himself and in the cold and in the dark and what I wouldn't have done to be there to just hold him. Any of you going through grief, death, and loss, we tend to bargain. We tend to um, wonder what we could have done differently. Did I not see something? I do believe, however, that our loved ones or we in our lives start seeing signs immediately after they leave this earth to show us that they're okay. The problem becomes <laughs> we aren't ready to see them. Some of us never even thought about signs. I've had several of you contact me and just, oh my gosh, Angie, is this a sign? Angie, I'm seeing this. Is this a sign? If it brings joy, if it brings peace and calm, don't judge it. Love it and, and appreciate it. And so I do believe they send us signs immediately after they leave this earth. We were in at Venice Beach. It's where Zach chose he wanted to go for spring break. So Jan, uh, my fiance, and, and uh, Zach and I headed to Los Angeles. And as soon as we landed is when my phone started pinging. Have you seen Nick? Haven't heard anything from him since last night. This is not like him. He didn't show up for work. And a mother's feeling uh, was I just didn't know what to do or how to move on. I just knew I was grateful for Jan because Jan said maybe he just decided to go off the grid for a little bit. He's 20 years old. And yet inside, I just had that sinking feeling that there was just something was wrong. We were in Los Angeles and it was when the Fast and Furious came out. It was going to be playing on April, I believe it was April 3rd, Friday was when the premiere and, and the show was going to come out. It was about Paul Walker and his life, Fast and Furious 7. But what was the sign for me was when Zach wanted to uh, go up and watch cars up at Wilshire Boulevard and Rodeo Drive. And we're walking past the Wilshire Hotel or the Wilshire, the Beverly Wilshire Hotel. And there was Wiz Khalifa's car. And I, I, he would know better than me, but it was like a gold plated uh, Bugatti. And we have pictures. And Nick loved cars. And the song that was the theme song for this particular uh, um, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought, you guys, uh, for this particular movie was See You Again by Charlie Puth 
and it was the soundtrack in Wiz Khalifa, which I later found out was one of Nick's favorite rappers. And so if you do get a chance, you can go on to YouTube and listen to that song. But I heard from uh, his friends, do you mind, Angie, can we play this song for his funeral and for his celebration of life? And it was just amazing. And one of his friends ended up getting a tattoo. And I asked if it was okay, Luke Lawrence, thank you so much for honoring my son in the way you did. He put it on the back of his, his shoulder. And it is a friendship turned to a bond. And that bond will never be broken. The love will never get lost. And rest in peace, Nick Corbett. And that was one of the songs. Uh, that was one of the verses in that song. Uh, so I was very grateful that I had Jan in my life. He made sure that I ate. He made sure that I slept. He gave me hugs when I cried. Um, we were married one year later on April 16th, 2016, one year after Nick had taken his life. Um, I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. Uh, I didn't, I, I, as a mom, my purpose and my role was gone. And thank goodness for Zach, my younger son, and for Jan. We got married, like I said, April 16th of 2016, or April 16th, 2016. And on April 25th, Jan took his life as well. So we are now talking about two suicides and there are those stages of grief, the denial, the anger, the bargaining, the depression, the acceptance. And I've had my listeners, I've had others email me. When do they go away? Which ones are first? Do you feel like they go in steps? Don't judge. Live through those moments. And you guys, I'm here to tell you, sometimes the five stages of grief are all compounded in one, one gigantic ball of just pain. And let's see, let's go over unexpected visitors. We've got one more minute before break. We will experience what I call the unexpected visitors. This is when we are moving on. We are moving forward. We think we got a hold of this thing. And Bam, like a tidal wave. It can bring us to our knees. And I laugh in, in my audience as I said, you know, I went into the kitchen, moved my cookbooks, uh, and there was a piece of scotch tape. You guys, a flipping piece of scotch tape. And I was balled up in the fetal position because Jan had used that scotch tape to hold up some of the lights that he was putting, uh, the cord for the lights that he was putting up under the cabinets in our kitchen. And so when we experience those unexpected visitors, those two, it is so important to not shove them under the carpet, but experience it in all its pain and its joy and its reminiscing and its, and its grief. It's all the sadness and then you can smile for that memory. Uh, when we come back, um, we will go into um, death and, and, and maybe a different view that we can start looking at, at death in a, in a different light. Thank you for joining me today. I, I appreciate you all and we'll be right back. If you have a sense that you were meant for more, Join Heather Allison every third Tuesday at noon Pacific as she explores an ancient, forgotten energy within us and helps us access our original archetypal blueprint. The Golden Path will help you remember the key to unlocking your life, love, success, and magic you were meant for. A key to unlocking your Golden Path. Visit heather-allison.com. Are you ready to finally feel empowered and knowledgeable in your political stance? Let Marsha Padilla Goad educate you on exactly how important grassroots advocacy is in a relatable way to all parties and all perspectives. 
Tune in to Grassroots Advocacy Radio with Marsha every first Tuesday of the month at 12 p.m. Pacific and 3 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more, visit DynamicsInPublicAffairs.com. Choose the new earth on the Cornelia Stephanie Show. Tune in each week on Transformation Talk Radio as Cornelia takes listeners on an odyssey of higher consciousness to inspire, educate, and empower. Cornelia guides people on the path of self-healing, peace, and liberation. The Cornelia Stephanie Show is your catalyst for anchoring heaven on earth on a global scale. For more information, go to CorneliaStephanie.com. Welcome back, my beautiful listeners. Before our last break, we were talking about the unexpected visitors. Um, My unexpected visitor, another one besides the scotch tape, was I was getting, and this was just recent, and it is now 2019, so we're talking three years later, and I still will get the unexpected visitor. So if you're thinking those are going to go away, probably not going to happen. Uh, I was getting ready to have a new washer and dryer put in um, my laundry room. And so I was moving. And you know how you've got the coins and you've got the socks and you've got the dust and you've got some water damage. Um, There was a bag and it was a gift bag. And Jan and I would love to recycle our gift bags. So it was a gift that I had given to him. And and what I put on this little card on this paisley black and white gift bag was for my love from your love. And I picked up that bag, you guys, and just started bawling again because he had taken that same gift bag, the card, which is attached. You could see my, 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 my words. And his words were to my love, for my love, with love, your love. And these are those little memories that, yes, they do come far and few between now as we're on our path and they're on their path. We're never forgotten. We will always be remembered. They will always remember us and they will come into our lives for a period of time. I believe this with all my heart and soul and leave us those little messages that they're still right here. So when you get those unexpected visitors, it will feel like a tidal wave and it will bring you to your knees for a moment in time. So moving on, uh, what I share or what I shared in these, these lectures, you guys go on to Google and just Google death. D-E-A-T-H, and go under and, and click on images. And is it any wonder that we are afraid of death, that we don't talk about death, that we're slightly relieved when it happens to someone else and not us? If you Google, there is no doubt in my mind We have to change our definitions of death and dying because to look at this, and and, and since this is radio, I'll share it with you. One is, has got like, it looks like a Darth Sidious with a noose. Another is a green, like a woman kind of cast in a greenish color with tears. It's got um, skeletons. It's got bones. It's got uh, skulls. Um, It's dark. It's got the grim reaper. This isn't the death that I'm experiencing. So I believe we can create something very different than what we've been taught. And I do believe when we are looking for something, we are going to attract something different. So by all means, if this attracts you and you're interested and this is the way you've believed it and this is the way you want to move forward, then expect same. I knew I didn't want this kind of death, especially when it's just the other half of life. 
And I share here also my resume. I was in biotech. I was in, I worked for Xerox Corporation. I got my degree in marketing from New Mexico State University, as I said previously. I was a successful business person for 25 plus years. I worked for Bayer. I worked for Actelion. I worked in pain management. Um, I was talking to doctors and now I'm talking about dead people and talking in some cases to dead people. So as I sit here, my beautiful listeners, I want you to know, I know what I am sharing with you is weird. I would do anything if I were not standing right here sharing this message with you. But I am. And I don't come from a frou-frou woo-woo background. I come from a very analytical A plus B equals C. And if it's not in that order, I want to know why. And what I learned about death and what death has taught me about life, you guys, is I know absolutely nothing. So to be pretend and to act like I have the answers, that is a lie because I don't. What I can tell you is when I keep an open mind about everything, I find my way, my way, not someone else's way, not living someone else's dream or expectations, but my own. So a key for me was to keep an open mind about everything. And I've done a couple of shows in the past. You all can go listen on the Transformation Talk Radio Network uh, or go to my website, uh, beyondproof.com. You'll see some of the archived But I did a a show on the left brain and right brain, and I called it the dilemma of each. And the left brain, I am the left brain. I am a scientist, a mathematician. I love the familiar. I categorize. I am accurate, linear, analytical, strategic. I am practical, always in control, a master of words and language, realistic, I calculate equations and play with numbers. I am order. I am logic. I know exactly who I am. That, in a nutshell, is the left brain. We need the left brain because we need to show up for appointments. We are on a time and space continuum here on this earth. So it is important that we are logical. It is important that we know how to drive a car. It is important that we read and write and we go to our jobs and we show up on time. But this, I also has found where programs stick. And this is sometimes difficult for those that are scientists, mathematicians, to be able to move into that right brain, which right brain, I am the right brain, yearning, sensuality, I am the sound of roaring laughter, I am taste, the feeling of sand beneath bare feet, I am movement, vivid colors, I am the urge to paint on an empty canvas, I am boundless imagination, art, poetry, I sense, I feel, I am everything I wanted to be. And a lot of the research that is coming out now, um, going over the brain and the mind, brain does not create consciousness. And you can see all the research that is being done in the division or at the Division of Perceptual Studies at University of Virginia in their near-death experience uh, patients with pediatric children being able to share lives, past lives. These are things that I would have never thought to open my mind to. This is what I would consider woo-woo. And yet there are thousands of case studies proving that our brain cannot create a consciousness. And here, and, and, and so imagination comes into play. And imagination to me is stronger than knowledge. 
death, you guys, is permanent. Death is a reality. So can we change how we move forward the remainder part of our life with death? And I believe there needs to be a sense of imagination. To dream is more powerful than fact. Hope triumphs over experience. Laughter is the only cure for grief. And I believe that love is stronger than death. Robert Fulgham said that. And I love that. I go into a little bit of energy here. And why do I go into energy? Because I believe that we are all spiritual beings. And we forget that as we are wrapped up in our luxurious cars and money and big houses and glutinous foods, more than enough that we can just throw it away. And yet at the core of our being, we are defined as pure light and pure energy, pure consciousness that is neither created nor destroyed. There is no beginning and no end. And this is a little bit difficult. Uh, and I go back and forth still sometimes. But the, but the pain, I've rid myself of such excruciating pain when I can start realizing that my loved ones, and so will I, just convert to another form that we are only put on this earth plane for a very short period of time. And so I go into the map of consciousness, the power versus force with uh, Dr. David Hawkins. And the reason I go into this is because he basically has taken shame and guilt, apathy, grief, fear, desire, anger, pride, courage, neutrality, willingness, acceptance, reason, love, joy, peace, enlightenment, and has calibrated this vibration. We are all vibrations, energy, and how high, how how much are you energized? How much are you vibrating? Are you living in humiliation, blame, despair, and regret, anxiety, craving, hate? Or can you live in reverence, serenity, bliss, or enoughness, or ineffable? And I love this because it's just, it's calibrating our vibrations here on earth and giving us an idea, where are we living? And I'm wanting to live in the reverence of both life and death, the serenity, knowing that this is not all that there is. And let's see, I think we're going on one minute. Um, I may be going over, so I'm just going to stop right here. We are going on a break. When we come back, you guys, we will go over a little bit more on energy and we'll hit the seven chakras, the energy centers in our body. When we come back. Do you want the knowledge and wisdom to understand where spirituality, science, and psychology intersect? Then join the Karmic Path Radio Show with Tina and Laura on TransformationTalkRadio.com, Thursdays at 4 p.m. Pacific. Follow this charmingly, disarmingly dynamic duo as they explore how psychic ability, spirituality, and karmic law tie together. For more information on Tina, Laura, and their groundbreaking work, visit TheKarmicPath.com. Do you know how to achieve wellness in all areas of your life? Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. Signs of wellness are a capacity to love and ability to nurture, a sense of purpose, a good sense of humor and plenty of fun in your life, a concern for others and a respect for the environment, a conscious commitment to personal excellence, a sense of balance and integrated lifestyle, and capacity to cope with whatever life presents. Well, people enjoy their lives and want them to last as long as possible. That's why the wellness mindset usually accompanies other constructive, healthy lifestyle habits. By adopting a wellness mindset, and behaviors like eating well, taking the right nutrition for the body, exercising, and saying affirmations are just a few things to structure a healthy system of values and beliefs. I will be your wellness coach to help you achieve a wellness lifestyle. Call us at 888-777-4232. That's 888-777-4232. And visit us at maryjanemack.com. 
On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Talk Radio. Do you know how powerful your thoughts and beliefs are in determining your experience of your life? Is it really true that simply by changing some of the words you use in your day-to-day language, that you can change your life? I'm Megan Edge. Join me on Playing on the Edge, Radical Change with Ease, with my co-host, Dr. Pat, on Transformation Talk Radio. I look forward to seeing you there. To find out more about Megan Edge, visit her website at meganedge.ca. Welcome back. We are in the third segment of Beyond Proof with me, your host, Angie Corbett Kuiper. Thank you, each and every one of you, for joining me today. I'm talking to you about some of the ways in which I am managing loss and what death has taught me. And at the very beginning, if you're just now joining me, is to keep an open mind about absolutely everything. And that is, we are divine light, our loved ones, our divine energy, and we are all helping one another home. And one of the areas that I like to talk about, one of the very first things I started getting interested in was the chakras or chakras. And I remember Prior to Nick dying and Jan dying, I thought it was woo-woo. And I didn't realize that there is a life force in all of us. And and at break, I was talking, uh, Kat, my producer, had said, Angie, I Googled death. Uh, I Googled the images of death. And it's scary. It's dark and it's dreary. Why can't we have a picture of a meditating person with a totally aligned chakras and what the chakras do not to be woo woo. And it doesn't go against any religion. It is what it is. They're energy centers. And if we believe that we are energy made up of just light at the root, which is the basic trust If we don't trust the process of life, we will not get into the sexuality or the creativity of life because we will be living in a mindset of lack. Then you move to the sacral, which is right above, uh, right in your, um, let's see, where is it? It's two inches above your belly button is where it's at. And that is where your sexuality and creativity reside. So if that is blocked, that then there you won't be creative. So find out what gets your juices moving. And you guys, this death, even though it's been painful, it is also, I've learned so much about me and about life that I didn't know before. Then you've got your solar plexus, which is in between your belly button and your heart, just a couple uh, couple inches above your sacral, which is wisdom and power. And you want to keep all of these open. And there's hospitals now are recommending uh, they're uh, they're recommending Reiki. That's a whole nother area. Opening up all of these chakras so that your mind and body and spirit can be one. Everyone knows where the heart is. That's your love and healing. Throat chakra. If you ever are talking with someone, are you speaking your truth? Are you saying one thing and meaning another? Are you saying yes when you mean no? Your third eye, which is just a little bit above, right in the forehead area, in between your two eyes, a little bit above. Your awareness And I believe this is the one single place that has helped me the most profound is awareness. It's living in this moment exactly right now 
so that I am an aware that I am aware of the miracles that tend to continue to present to me. And then last but not least, there are several chakras, but these are the main ones. The crown chakra that's uh, up on top, top of our head, that is all spirituality. And uh, the divine is what I like to call it. I also started doing work. I had a girlfriend. Um, she was actually a shaman. Um, she had said to me, have you ever used a pendulum? And you all can get a pendulum. I'll be teaching some classes on pendulum use. But it's all the chakras, the energy, the pendulum use of learning to trust ourselves, learning to feel because it is in the feeling that we will feel our loved one's presence, that we'll know their presence using the five senses to get to that sixth sense. So one of you follow the breadcrumbs, my search began and I did, uh, I got a phone call from Tracy small. Uh, and she said, Angie, I don't know, uh, how, where your religious belief is. And she said, but I'd like to see if Nick would come through. And isn't it interesting that it was when Nick came through, it was only three days after his death that I was connected, Tracy and Candace. You all can go listen to that um, uh, radio program. It's called Connecting Two Worlds, where I have Tracy and Candace. And we talk about the whole experience. But if you are sitting there, saying my religion does not allow me to go to a medium that's voodoo, that is satanic worship. Um, there, I have had several guests on my radio program. There are several books. And what is starting to come about, you guys, and it's so amazing, is where spirituality and science can meet. And they don't harm one another. They don't take away from the other and think about it. What is medium? What is the definition of medium? Just something in between. It's communication that travels from a broadcast to a receiver. And in the spiritual terms, it's simply when someone, it's someone who can converse with the dead. And honestly, we are all mediums if we choose but it takes that level of awareness. And going, and, and as I mentioned, just following the breadcrumbs, uh, we have these six senses, the sight, the hear, the taste, the smell, the touch, the intuition, the gut feeling. We are all psychic. We have those gut feelings. Our egos just don't want us to follow the gut feeling. But our guts are never wrong those little Jiminy crickets that sit on our shoulder and they will not lie to us. And that's where I love to use that pendulum in my lectures and in my workshops. And it, it is basically show me yes, show me no. It's a psychokinesis. Show me yes, show me no. Until I trust, I'll never know. Because not very many of us know how to feel. We've been even taught when we eat dinner, 6 p.m., better be sitting at the dinner table. We don't even know what it feels like to be hungry, let alone what it would feel like when our loved ones try to speak to us. Another thing that I learned about life and death through death, uh, my son, my, my living son was like, Mom, can we get a dog? And you guys, I know that feeling. I didn't even want to get out of bed in the morning let alone have another responsibility. And you know what? It was the best decision that I ever made. So I would get up in the morning. I would make Zach his breakfast. I would get him off to school. I had Maisie. I could bring her for walks. Um, I taught her. It was a huge responsibility how to go, you know, where to go poop and pee in the yard. So if you are in that moment where it's just, you just have no reason to even get up, the unconditional love of a pet 
was something that was so unexpected, but it was so, it was filled with just such um, um, joy, if, if you will, or something I didn't feel alone. And Zach, I've got pictures you all can go to my Facebook page if you'd like. Um, but I mean, just he, we just, we're just so absolutely grateful that we, that we got Maisie. Um, in our quest, if you are listening to this program, it's my, I'm assuming that you are wanting to connect with your loved one. And I get this a lot is Angie, you get these amazing signs and how do I connect with my loved one? And there's one word, two words, actually. First one is awareness, not being in the moment. will you will miss those opportunities. And what do I mean by that? I give an example. I was walking Maisie on the golf course one morning and I looked to the left and I was lamenting the past, um, the loose trail up at the Sandies. I was crying because I was missing Jan. Um, he asked me to marry him up at the loose trail. Uh, it was 11 hour hike. Um, he brought up a bottle of wine. He surprised me September of 2011. And then I'm looking just to the right and to scale. It would seem like it was maybe, maybe five or seven miles. And there were the water towers where Nick had taken his life. I was sad and I'm looking at both of these going, oh my gosh, worrying about the future and, and, and lamenting the past that I had missed a hawk feather. <gasps> and I went back and in a hawk feather, yes, the triviality, it was a trivial hawk feather. Most people see them. Most people see feathers. Most people see birds. The hawk feather was significant, you guys. And I had to walk back about 10 feet. I picked up that hawk feather and to you all, it may have been trivial, to me, it was the last time I had ever seen Jan alive. He made coffee for me in the morning. He sat in the bed like we always did for five years. Amazing lovemaking, amazing sex. Bring in the coffee. We sit down. He's reading from his iPad, routers, uh, Reuters, whatever you call it, whatever it is, Washington Post and New York Times. And I was reading, I don't even know what I was reading, but all of a sudden this humongous hawk flew into the bird bath. And the hawk was like 10 times too big for the bird bath. And I'll be doing a, a, a blog or something so you guys, and, and with the video so you can see that. And we've got about one minute until break. Let me just finish this cat and then we'll, we'll take a break. The, the, the hawk feather in its own right was trivial until you knew the backstory. Now it doesn't become trivial anymore. It becomes the miracle. And because of my awareness that morning, I would have missed it because I was too busy worrying about tomorrow. And I was lamenting what I had lost. And in that moment, that hawk feather was an answer that, hey, I'm right here. I know you'll get this, Angie, because it was the last time, it was the last morning that I saw Jan alive. So when we come back, uh, we will go over uh, some other ways in order to communicate with our loved ones as well and what death has taught me about life. Thank you, each and every one of you, till we come back. Tune in to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Neff. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. The Lucid Planet. Welcome home. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for more information. Are you feeling stuck in unhealthy habits, toxic relationships, or low self-esteem? Do you crave a healthy relationship filled with inspiration? You might just be on the verge, on the verge of attracting your soulmate. 
Tune in each month to The Laura Richer Show, where dating coach Laura Richer and co-host matchmaker Peggy Bennett share tools for using your dating breakdown for a relationship breakthrough. For more information, visit richerhealinghypnosis.com. Has your buzz for life buzzed off? Feeling ignored, invisible, and wondering if this is really all there is? The years go by faster as we gain momentum. You're halfway there. Are you gathering speed or puttering out? Hit your stride for the liberating half of life. Comfortable in your skin? You can do better than that. Tune in to Discovering You Again Radio every fourth Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific as host Susan Axelrod encourages listeners to decide what they want, get inspired to action, and face challenges head on. Host Susan Axelrod pulls no punches, encouraging you to grab the brass ring and soar. For more information about Susan, go to www.whatwillyourlegacybe.com. Are you ready to create a life you'll really love? Then you'll want to tune in to the hit show Life Design Radio from Adversity to Awesome with Susan DiLorenzo. Live each month on TransformationTalkRadio.com. No matter where you are in your adversity story, Life Design Radio has got you covered. Get ready to feel inspired, enlightened, and motivated. For more information about working with Susan, visit SusanDiLorenzo.com. Welcome back to the final segment, my beautiful listeners of Beyond Proof. I'm Angie Corbett Kuiper, your host. Um, And we are talking about what death, or I'm talking about what death has taught me about life. And that is, if I can give you all one takeaway, do not judge where your blessings will come. Uh, One of the next things that I did, which was so unlike me, Uh, I was choosing to write a book about Nick's death, and this is before Jan even died. And I remember going into Natural Grocers and picking up the Natural Awakenings magazine and seeing Tom Bird, who has a a program, a way in which we are able to publish books, uh, write a book in a weekend when we get our egos out of the way and we are able to connect with the divine. And he had read, I thought I was going to go up there, show him this book, which was just probably a bunch of vomit, a bunch of diary of, you know, diarrhea of my whole life. And he just said it was raw. But he said, I really want you to meet Luna Van Atta. And I've had Luna Van Atta on a couple of my programs as well, as it pertains to astral projection, astral travel, remote viewing, and Reiki, the use of... um, or, or balancing our chi. And I didn't, you guys, it's a childlike wonderment or a childlike curiosity that's so important. When we were little, we wanted to know everything. Where did that come from? Why? Why does it do that? Why does she do that? Why does this appear? Well, how can this happen? We lose that. And I think in death, I believe in death, it has the potential to allow us to come full circle into that childlike wonderment. So I did go meet Luna Van Atta. I had no idea what, what, what the purpose was, but I realized what the purpose was very quick. She knew, she knew Nick, not, she'd never met him, but she knew his soul print. And she had me create what was called an astral temple. And she has um, trademarked astral temple. And it was just amazing. And so this was in meditation It is allowing our left brains, our egos to just take a little rest and allowing this creation, this creativity. And so I created and then had an artist uh, in the UK render it for me. And it was the most beautiful meeting place that I had created where I could meet Nick. And and I don't really need it. But I think why I presented it was because it could help any of you who are looking at meeting your loved one and needing a little help to meet at that veil 
Oh, they're just on the other side. And it's teaching us to love not with our eyes, but with our souls and our heart. They can, no one can ever take that away. And then also, uh, I had a huge miracle uh, with the jasmine plant. And I'm just going to briefly, um, the memories of yesterday are what are going to present as the miracles for you today. And yes, they're painful at first, but now it's exciting. It I enjoy, you know, how are you going to present today? They're still here. And I would also recommend you guys a dream journal. And I realize that I've kept my dream journal since 2015 when Nick died. And it's ratted and it's torn. It sits on the side of my bed. And there are months that go by that I don't have a dream. But when I do, I could go back and sometimes it's six months and all of a sudden the connections are made. One of the biggest ones that I'll share with you is I woke up, I was writing in my dream journal that Nick handed me this bracelet that said IKEA. And he said, Mom, I know everything already. But just three or four months previous, he handed me this bracelet and I put Ikea, well, I'm supposed to buy furniture. My, you know, you know, what was I doing prior to this dream to have Ikea present? And then it presented, but I didn't judge that dream. And it took three months for the manifestation of what it meant to present. But when it did, oh my gosh, it, it, it meant so much. It was amazing. If you are looking for a medium, listen to your friends or your family or anyone that you trust. If they recommend or just even go online, good mediums and just feel it. And the one thing that I recommend if you are going to a medium, if you're contemplating like I really want to see, don't feed them. That means do not tell them how old you are. Don't tell them anything about your loved one. Do not tell them where you live. Do not tell, do not feed them. They don't care who you are. They want to give you an accurate reading. And my recommendation as well is only go to evidence-based where they can say, like James Von Prague said to me, he was with you when you were got the nail clippers out of the drawer. Who would know though that? Those are unexplained moments and those are things that aren't you don't go out and spread to the whole world. They're definitely not Google moments and they're certainly not Facebook moments. It will be so impactful for you. And if you don't have a good feeling, get out. Because my feeling is any the best medium is going to be the medium that can share with you without you saying one word. Um, and let's see, where else do we want to go? I've had a few very, very, really, really good um, conversations with some of you. You have emailed me to let me know, and I've shared this one, which is amazing. Um, this mother... Uh, is Mackenzie's mom, and her name is Crystal. And Crystal sent me an email. She said, I cannot wait to share this with you. And it's the triviality of a receipt. Do you hear that, you guys? The triviality, in the triviality of a, of a receipt from a pizza joint gave this particular family hope. And I'll share just this with you. And then we're three minutes, you guys, and our show is ended. Hopefully I'm giving you tools and I will put on my website. I am going to be creating resources for you all. I get a lot of what book was that? How do you know the authors? Who do you use for meditation? Where do you go to find a good medium, et cetera, et cetera. So I will be putting something like that on my, on my website soon. Getting back to Mackenzie, she said, 
my husband and remaining daughter are having a difficult time with Mackenzie's death. Her, the dad and the younger daughter were going to go see a concert. They went to the pizza place and the dad, uh, Mackenzie's dad said, I usually, you know, shove the receipt in my pocket or I will throw it away. And this time he said, I looked at it. The amount was $49 and 79 cents. And it said, hope to see you again soon, Kenzie. Some of you would say Kenzie could be a popular name. You know, it could be a coincidence. Where the miracle comes in is the backstory. And that was when Crystal had said, Angie, Mackenzie was rather upset with us the way we spelled her name. K-E-N-Z-I. So to that family, that one receipt was a sign that gave them a momentary joy. And these continue to appear. There are more and more and more. And last but not least, you guys, I have one. If you are, I I had a woman in my audience um, a few weeks ago. And she said, my, my mom and dad are elderly, Angie, and I'm afraid I don't want them to die. And this woman had lost her cat. This woman had lost uh, her friend. And now she was worried about losing her mom and dad because she said, I just, you know, I, I would miss them, but I would feel very much alone. A suggestion for any of you whose parents may be aging um, have the conversation. Um, I have a very dear friend who said the most peace she ever received was from her father. And that is just asking your loved one before they die, show me a sign. And you give one another an idea of a sign that you are going, they will present to you or you will present to them And it will be so profound and only you will know it. And I will be posting a blog up soon because we're we're running out of time right now. I think the closing message is start talking about death as if it isn't foreign. I know for me, the more I share it, the more I talk about it, the more afraid I don't become. Knowledge is power. And when we have that knowledge, we don't fear We fear the unknown. And it's like Kat going to Google and Googling death. Of course, we're going to fear death when that's all the representation that we have. So I'm asking you to join me on my journey in trying to change our current self-limiting beliefs as it pertains to death, loss, and grief and suffering. And with that, I thank you all for a beautiful uh, another program. I hope you got something out of it. Bottom line, what death has taught me about life, the more curious I am, the more I find answers that allow me to live in peace. And I am living my life and I'm not living someone else's creation and someone else's journey. So I challenge each and every one of you Find those breadcrumbs, follow the breadcrumbs. Don't judge the messenger because it may be giving you the most amazing healing of all. And in love and light, thank you all. Until next time, bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Beyond Proof Radio with Angie, redefining death and loss. Tune in every first and third Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com as Angie shares through choice, present moment awareness, and a willingness to keep an open mind about everything that anything is possible. Tune in every first and third Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com as Angie shares through choice, present moment awareness, and a willingness to keep an open mind about everything that anything is possible, even in death. For more information or to listen to past shows, visit BeyondProof.com. That's BeyondProof.com. See you next time.